Hello, my name is Jörg Sjöhrn Vogt. I'm from the IBM Germany Development Lab. And I'm the team lead of a team working on FPGA hardware accelerators. The preparation phase of CapiSnap provides a basic framework for planning your accelerator. It consists of four steps that are critical to moving forward with your implementation. The steps are selecting an algorithm to accelerate. This is the most important decision. Picking the right SNAP enabled FPGA card for your project then choosing the appropriate snap mode and finally defining the application programming interface to call the accelerator. We will now go deeper into each of these steps. Later we will describe the execution phase shown on the right side of this chart. The most important decision for CapiSnap or any acceleration project is to select an algorithm that is both significant to your application and appropriate for running on an FPGA the key is to have a performance profile for your application code to understand your current bottlenecks. Just because an algorithm is appropriate for the FPGA does not mean that it's significant to your application. You could, for example, get four times the performance by accelerating a particular function. But if that function only consumes 1% of your current runtime, then accelerating it is not interesting. This is why performance profiling of your current code is crucial. Once you identify bottleneck functions, you then must select ones where the FPGA can improve your performance. Look for numerical intensive algorithms such as complex formulas or functions with many iterations that can be unrolled. The Fourier series sum formula shown here could be an example. Check if a series of instructions can be replaced by a custom instruction such as for bit manipulations in the FPGA. Parallelizable algorithms, ones that must run many times with different parameters, for example, lend themselves very well to FPGAs, where we can create multiple pipelines that work in parallel. Text and data filtering and searching operations are also a good fit for the FPGA, especially if those operations are on data that is coming into the server or exiting the server. FPGAs excel on filtering data as it moves into or out of the server. A good example of a function we did in CapiSnap is a SHA-3 secure hash function called CatJack. This function was a great fit for an FPGA for multiple reasons. First, the customer knew it took significant CPU cycles to calculate. Second, it is numerically intensive. And third, it was highly parallelizable. This slide shows two FPGA images, on the left with 16 CatCheck instances and on the right with 32 instances. Both images have the power service layer, PSL, in the large rectangle on the bottom right. The pink area is the CapiSnap infrastructure logic. All of the rest of the area on the FPGA is free space for your algorithm. In this case, each of the yellow blobs is a single CatCheck engine. The more CatCheck engines we can fit into the FPGA, the higher the performance. But clearly there is a limit, as 32 engines pretty much fill the FPGA. In our CapiSnap overview, we talked a bit about different data flow models, which we show again here. These are useful in identifying potential acceleration concepts. Each of these models suggests different types of algorithms that you could accelerate. If you are pulling lots of data from storage or networks, as with the top diagram, the question to ask is, what is the first operation you do on the data? Server memory is expensive, and you don't want to fill it with data that you don't need. So if you are looking for specific data, or you are culling columns and rows from a database, then consider doing the searching, filtering, or initial database operations on the FPGA. Not only will the FPGA perform the operation faster, but you will also save on memory usage while keeping the PCI Express bandwidth below its maximum. Also with this model, video analytics is an interesting use case. The incoming data could be multiple video feeds, all heading towards a machine learning application. But in order to meet performance requirements, the machine learning deep learning engines cannot consume all frames of incoming video at their full bandwidth. Instead, the FPGA can strip out redundant data and focus on regions of interest. The FPGA can also remove frames 
that have no changes from previous frames. And in some implementations, the full machine learning inference engine can be an action under SNAP. The second diagram is the typical offload from software of long-running algorithms or side jobs. The key question with the offload engine is how much data must be sent for the job compared to how long the operation will take. The FPGA will give a performance boost, but if it takes more time to transfer the data to or from the FPGA, then the benefit will be limited. The calculation for this is straightforward. Divide the data amount by the link bandwidth to get the time it will take to transport data. If this time is less than you are spending in the software function, then you should consider acceleration. The last diagram shows the egress case, where data is flowing out of the server to storage or network devices. If there is data manipulation required, such as encryption, formatting or compression, the FPGA can perform the function and then send the data directly to the destination.